Hello guys and welcome to episode 2 of my Total War Warhammer 2 playthrough playing as the Wood Elves on very hard difficulty. This is Mortal Empires and we are going for World Domination. We're going to be continuing with our colonization of the North today. Maybe annihilating the vampire counts as well. Let's see who we have to move. We have Strasleith moving up to the Tower of Crack. We can see Manfred at the Bay of Blades. So we're going to have to be wary of that. Serco's busy recruiting himself a forest dragon here at Fort uh, Jakova. What we're going to do um, at Fort Jakova is build another sacrificial grounds. But one thing that was mentioned in my comments by Ronald, I think it was, um, was to maybe switch out the waystones for hunting grounds or foraging groves even because this improves income from all buildings by 2% faction wide and if I manage to stack that quite a lot we could improve our income and then be able to make more armies which would probably be a much quicker way than buffing the armies I already have like having more armies available in order to attack more places at once is probably a better idea. So anyway, let's get uh, Isratot to come up here and uh, he can colonize Hell Pit for us. We have Iskura, who's going to be taking Ice Pack or Pack Ice Bay. Let's go ahead and colonize that. Thank you very much. And we're going to start to bring greenness to this land. We have uh, Dotean here. He's currently heading down to help finish off the sort of straggling armies of chaos. We also have uh, Treebeard here, who's going to be heading in that direction. Going to try and take out uh, the vessels of chaos here. And we also have Setashal, going to be picking up this treasure for us. Gives us five thousand. Not not bad. And now we're going to be coming down towards Phyrus. To death is leveled up, so we'll get the Curse of Ander here. And then it's just Dalsi, who needs to start heading down. And that's everything done. Fantastic. So it's pretty much going to be like this for the majority of the campaign, I think. Just sort of... Moving my armies, having battles where I need to, and just colonizing new places. But since we are at the start of this episode, what I think I'm going to do is uh, actually start having a look around and changing my buildings. So let's start at Averland, which is going to do this in alphabetical order. To make sure that. Uh, I don't need these places. Okay, Blightwater, I'll probably need them. It's probably actually better to do it like this, isn't it? Eastern Badlands is fine. Um, Desolation of Nagash is fine. At the Western Badlands, I think I need to keep the Waystones for now. Uh, we've done them there already. Done them there. Done them there. Uh, we can change the one at Akendorf for sure. We can change all of these ones as well. Let's do that. We've already done it at Grand Peak. That Peak Pass, we can do these ones. And I can also do the one at Kazid Urkelaz. Uh, we can do it at Sylvania. And Western Sylvania. Sterland. I may as well do it at Reichland, actually. Talablackland, uh, Middenland. I'm aware that this may be annoying to hear, but um, either way has to be done. We've already done the Northern Grey Mountains, that's good. Uh, maybe we should do Palavon as well. I don't think there's going to be any more beastmen spawning. And the good thing about doing it this way is next turn, 
on the right side it will pop up with all of the locations where I can build. Let's get rid of the waystone at Kislev. I'm going to keep it in Nordland for now. I'm not sure about Gorsor, I don't think we need to. Because all the ones on the coast, they matter. But most of them just have elven havens anyway. Let's just change maybe Castle Carcassonne. The main issue is I'm going to be actually attacking across the water. So I do have to be careful that I don't get hit myself by navies if I remove a lot of these waystones. I think I could even delete them here in Northern Oblast. Maybe even at Troll Country because I don't think that the vampire counts are ever really going to be able to attack me. They might sneak through my lands with an army at some point but we'll have to wait and see. Right, that'll do for now. That's more than enough buildings. All of those I'm going to make into foraging groves. Let's move on to the next turn. We'll see how much that improves our income. It should be quite a lot, honestly. Right, we'll just speed up everything. Looks like Lothan's still beating on Nagarond. I guess we could beat on Nagarond with the armies in the north if uh, Lothan hasn't already killed them off. Probably a decent idea to keep an eye on the Vessels of Chaos, just to see where they go, in case they do anything stupid. Now I was hoping that the end turns would actually start to get faster, but it seems like they do take their sweet time still. A new horde was spawned by the Chaos faction there. Look at that demolition though. <laughs> Loads of demolition. The Night Glens. Do you want extra Winds of Magic Power Reserve? Uh, I don't think so. Lady Molana and Lord Arles have been turning a blind eye to the practices of their subjects, and hence the shadowed Night Glens are awash with forbidden and arcane magics. The elven subjects are ever accommodating and invite you to join them, perhaps in the hope that you may spare them retribution and even learn something for your trouble. We're just going to ignore them for now. Builder for Oscura. Okay. Look at all of those waystones being demolished. Right now I'm going to go through these again. And we will create foraging groves. The growth faction wide is so useless though. That's the only trouble with building these ones. Like at least the sacrificial ground actually buffs my forces. I think I'm going to create one for every three I guess maybe we'll do it that way or every place where there's like three settlements we will build like one sacrificial grounds and two foraging groves at Hessian, what can we build there orchards Let's do it. I don't think we have access to wine yet, so might increase any trade that we have going on. Although trade income is going to disappear once we go to war. So there is that. Put sacrificial grounds in there. Okay, good. Something's going to happen that's going to make me instantly regret this. I kind of feel it coming. And it will be totally my bad. But oh well.
So far, so good. Weapon strength of our units is going to be crazy high. Also, like, the unit ranks are going to increase really quickly. So, yeah, I'm just sort of trying to spread out as evenly as possible. Okay, so we'll have to see how that affects our income in the next turn. Let's now move Durthu on towards Shock Tracken. Although I kind of want to get uh, Durthu over to annihilate Manfred once again. So I might even have like Yisratot just take like health hit and then jump over to Shock Tracken. I might do that instead. Mossy help hit. That gives us another 10% income from all buildings faction-wide as well. Alright, let's just have Durthu zoom towards the vampires. The vampires did indeed take the Bay of Blades. We're going to take the Tower of Clack. Okay. Move on to our next armies. Is it okay? I don't think we need him up north. We're going to head him down south, I think. It's going to take him a while to get down here, but probably necessary in the long run. Orion's moving around down here. He's actually moving towards this army that declared on us. And Iskira. I think we'll head uh, to the right before we go back to the left. Gonna let him get his replenishment just in case we bump into any vampires. Okay, time for our leader here, Treebeard, to. I think we're gonna annihilate Rel while we're in range too. delete those guys and then we're going to come back for Malefex. Right, let's continue with the Shield of the Forest there and we'll have Dateyan jump onto the water, come over to a Gronti Mingol and uh, he can colonize that for us. Let's get Foe Seeker now for Groot. He's joined Dateyan. Now I did have a suggestion actually to change one of my Waywatchers names to Legolas and honestly I think we're going to change the one in Strasleid's army because we have Dulas and Dulas which is kind of confusing for if I was in a battle like having to refer to either the Branch Wraith or the Waystalker. So we're going to change the name of Dulas to Legolas. I think that is a very suitable name indeed. Um, let's go ahead and jump in here. We shall rename him to Legolas. Okay, there we go. Nice. So that army can still move, but I don't want to move it. Uh, we're going to have Zetashal uh, come ashore here at Phyrus. And I guess we're going to have to deploy next to Al Haik, which is fine by me. And uh, we will take that off uh, Bjornling and uh, destroy them hopefully. I'm not sure where their armies are. Uh, but they did have some big armies originally. They might have been killed off by whoever they come up against. I think it's like clan wars down here. Finally, just gotta move Dalsith. And that's everything. Alright, let's uh, end the turn. So I can start a war with Bjornling, mainly because I've just got two armies there that are pretty much ready to go. 
vampire counts are going to be coming round to attack me by the looks of things. And that's fine by me. Speed up the rest of the nations. So we're well on our way to world domination. And if our income goes down to like 20k, like our deficit's 20k, then I'm very tempted to build another new army. Looks like uh, Gulator Trigox here went for the assault garrison and assault units there as well. Malefax is going to move away. Fine. Okay, mission issued. Ashes to Ashes, defeat Manfred von Karstein. Going to jump into normal stance here. We're going to declare war on Bjornling. They don't have any allies. So we can attack them. That's a quite simple auto resolve there, I feel. Uh, we will raise it. And I think I will just take it over because I don't think there's another army nearby that can attack me. So that makes us a little bit of cash. And we'll just move on and take Firus, which is their capital. Now Hake can become an Asray lookout. Jump up to Dirty. Hmm. I'm going to world roots towards Shock Track in here. And we're going to take that. What I might do on the way past here is settle Kazid Bordkrag for Dirthu. Strasslaith is in range to attack Manfred, who pretty much has his army filled with regiments of renown. That's pretty scary, but I mean, our units are depleted as well, so maybe they'll fight me. Oh, well. Rip. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay, they're still alive somehow, but okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we killed all of his units, but whatever. It's fine. The game loves to screw me over. We are on minus 24,000. Is that enough to recruit myself another army? I kind of feel like it is. Yeah, Ryan needs to continue his movement towards Varenka Hills. Where he can defend against this army, this rogue army. Unit rank 7, unit rank 8. He's got a unit rank 9, Dragon Ogre Shagoth. Okay. Don't know where that came from, but sure. Why is the movement here still a thing? Okay, we'll just do that. It's fine. Stops me from clicking on him again. Time for Detain to uh, take Ronti Mingol. And we'll have Treebeard go and deal with Malefex. Then Treebeard can come down towards Alhaik and help with uh, destroying Bjornling. And off we go with Dalsith once again. Let's see, shall we? New Lord. Maybe it's time to actually raise a Glade Lord. But why would I when I can get Dalsith here? The extra range for like all units is so good. Also this uh, strategist, the extra plus 5% campaign map movement range would be really good for this late game. But I think we're going to go for this Dreamman. And we get Raise the Banners which is extra unit experience for all units and minus recruitment cost. Okay. So we're already back up to 30,000. Losing 30,000 per turn. He has 11 ranks, so we got 10 skill points. 
go towards Call of the Woods. We'll pick up Forest Roar. Swinging Bows. Do we want the Howl of the Forest? Sure. And we'll start leveling up Shield of the Forest. And that will basically buff all of the units that he recruits. Which are going to be probably a similar army to Treebeard. So let's just jump over to Treebeard here. He's got five units of Waywatchers. Five units of Treekin. Alright, we'll do that. So, we'll go for Treekin first. I think they're cheaper upkeep. I'm not entirely sure. Hmm. Sure, why not? We'll do it this way. Um, I need to make sure that I can build my dragons. How many turns does it take in global recruitment to build a dragon? Let's just build them like this, like so. So four turns and we get a treeman and dragons. Then if we build the treekin, we build the waywatchers. And then what else could we use? It was mentioned to me that I didn't really have any units to climb walls, so maybe we could just sneak in some wilded rangers. We can have like a unit to climb each side of the gates. Uh, the wild riders are always really nice though. We do have dragons, however. Let's go for Wild Red Rangers. We'll sneak those in there. So that's going to be two turns. And we're done. Okay, good. So that's a new army on its way. I reckon our in our deficit's going to go up to like minus 40,000. But as we continue to take places, I will just make more foraging groves, especially on this top side. The vampires really just aren't a threat. Okay. All our armies are moved, we move on to the next turn. I don't think I even have to care about what the vampires are doing at this point. Manfred's just retreating anyway. Fine by me. Probably can only recruit zombies from the raised dead pool anyway. <laughs> Surprised that they don't though. Something that I would always do when I was playing the vampires is just fill my armies with zombies if I couldn't fill them with anything else. Treebeard has gained the fortunate trait. It's rather nice. So Jared's errantry broke their non-aggression pack with me. That's actually good timing. Take Gaz's board frag. Very nice. We're gonna take shot tracking. The other issue that we do have is that all of this colonization is actually costing us quite a bit. Not sure we're in range to I think we might just take the bear blades. Let's just seed that so we get the replenishment. Good. Now he's taking attrition as well from that. Sacco is continuing down. His branch wraith has leveled up though. Continue with endurance of the oak. Orion is in range to destroy this army. Let's go ahead and do that. Celestial Storm is dead, and he's won three battles. 
which will lead towards the next section of his quest. Is there any character to Val's Anvil? Suitors of Ariel return, battered but victorious, proud of their achievements in the field and eager to see if they will be chosen for rebirth as King in the Woods. Yet there are forces of darkness that would see this path curtailed all too quickly. A poison, vicious and cloying, flows through the candidates by means of tainted chalices. By morning they are all as cold as winter's breath, all except one who has vanished without trace. Athaloran is in uproar, fear sets in like a deep chill, which shatters into panic when a rebel force reveals itself, advancing on the Oak of Ages. Enraged and alarmed, Orion rushes back to defend the Oak. Even as he feels his strength sapping away, he knows he must do this one last thing. Okay. So, Dalsith can just go and complete that for us. That's fine. Lord of the forest. Meanwhile, though, Orion's just going to continue down south. He has leveled up after destroying that army. So let's uh, max out his temper de rigor. Get him back into a march dance and carry on. Okay, time for Iskira to take Ice Cured. And Tain can build his Elven Haven there. Alright, time to move towards Galbaras. If this is owned by Clan Moors, I think I might just start the war with them. Let's just uh, stay in our territory for this turn so we get the Extra replenishment. And Setashal is in range to take Virus, so let's just go and do that. So, no crazy battles yet today. That's what was one worry of me doing this campaign, like continuing to the end. It's going to get to the point where we just auto resolve a lot of the battles and not fight them out. We'd just be fighting them out for the sake of it, which is a shame. But uh, we're just going to take the money where we can get it anyway. Let's go ahead and do that. Ooh, we got some nice armor there, though. And then colonize that. So we only made, like... Was it 2,000? From that? But never mind. Um, replenishment costs us nothing, so... Other than maybe time, but... we got all the time in the world to... Get that army back online. Let's give to Duthus an Elven Steed. Okay. Now it's time for Treebeard to chase down Malefex. As I would like to kill him. And now it's time for our Waywatcher here to move on down. So, one thing I would like to ask you guys is if you have a name for my new Treeman, let me know in the comments. I'm open to suggestions as we already have a way watcher called Dalsith. And I don't want things getting confusing again. We do have a settlement upgrade at uh, Firus and we want to build the Elven Haven here. Any other buildings that we've missed at the moment? I don't think there is. Let's move on to the next turn. So yeah, the main thing I'm going to try and do is just keep up the pace of the campaign, just kind of try and keep it going as fast as I can, take the world as quickly as I can. Ooh, the tower crack is under threat. Lothan well, would like to join the war against vampire counts. I don't know why they don't just declare themselves. It's interesting though that they're Strength bar is about 50-50. Pretty strong at the moment. Kind of scared of if they have armies full of star dragons. That would be probably my worst fear. Seems they prefer the armies of Swordmasters of Hoeth though, from what I've seen. So maybe it won't be a problem. But I'm not quite sure 
forest dragons really match up at all to forest dragons or to star dragons. Forest dragons don't match up to star dragons. Uh, we are going to jump across into the face of this army. And what I'm going to do is give Dada an Elven Steed now. We're losing 38,000 per turn at the moment. Get ourselves a Foraging Grove here. And Isratot can go take Cracker Drac. Does this give us an Occupy Cracker Drac? No, it doesn't. Okay. Right, Dirthu is now going to zoom his way towards the Tower of Crack here. Is Strasleith in range to attack? I don't think he is. Okay, so if they go ahead and take the Tower of Crack, we'll just destroy them. In the meantime, it's for us to go and attack Silent Camel. So let's go ahead and do that. Player Blades can just build the port there. And a Waystalker leveled up. Max out Expeditious Endeavor. Continue Circo on his way. Continue Orion on his way. I really like Orion's army. It's not very practical for attacking settlements, no. But in the open field battles, it's just awesome. Uh, Iskera. He can pick up Longship Graveyard and then go back on himself, I think. Time for Tatean to check out Galbaraz for us. Oh, there's a full stack there. Cancel move. Let's just see what's going on. Oh, they're just clam rats. Okay, we're fine. <laughs> I thought that was actually going to be something scary, but it's not. Right, we are going to have to be a little bit careful about clan moors, because I think they own pretty much all all of these uh, what are uncolonized ruins they definitely own all of these ones i know that much um, but all of these ones as well in between us and the necrog brotherhood well it looks like guys next time round, i am going to declare on clan moors we'll have a big battle at galbaraz against creek headtaker i think that will actually be pretty damn fun to watch so make sure you stick around for the third episode of the world domination with the Wood Elves. In the meantime, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.